I, I'll be honest, most people in the U.S. are vitamin D deficient just because of where we live. More and more studies are showing the dangers associated with low levels of vitamin D, a nutrient crucial for good bone health and our overall immune system. A new study published in the American Journal of Public Health says it found a link between low levels of the vitamin and premature death saying heart disease and cancer are more common when people have a vitamin D deficiency. The debate begins when it comes to how much vitamin D could prevent those risks. Like every vitamin, there's the right amount. As an endocrinologist at Stanford Hospital, Dr. Bismruta Misra sees many health woes related to low levels of the vitamin. A shortage, she says, oftentimes goes unnoticed. That's part of the problem. There are no symptoms. I mean, there's been some anecdotal reports that maybe it's a contributor to fatigue. Um, it is a part, very important part of muscle and bone strength. So again, I see people who maybe come in with recurrent fractures. However, vitamin D is actually really hard to find in food. I'm telling patients to take between 1,000 to 2,000 units of vitamin D a day. A glass of milk has 100. And because vitamin D is so hard to get naturally from a food source, many stores are now selling cereals like this one here, fortified with the vitamin. I think that's been a really recent push in nutrition of we are trying to do a lot with kind of fortifying foods because people aren't eating right. I'd rather people get focus on getting them from more natural sources. But the most natural source of all is the sun, coming from the same rays many of us are trying to block with sunscreen. Combined with the fact that we live in an area with a fluctuating climate, that leaves many of us at risk to a vitamin D deficiency. But being that symptoms are generally not noticed and the true health risks are not confirmed, there's no mandate yeah. for doctors to universally test for a deficiency. That's according to a government health panel Monday choosing not to endorse widespread screening for vitamin D levels. It's not necessarily a bad recommendation. They tend to be very conservative, the recommendations, but I think we're going to find soon in their ongoing studies that there probably is a benefit um, and they're just figuring out what the right doses. Reporting for its relevant news, I'm Diana Blass.